lesson 2.3 is three-dimensional geometry with solid surface area and volume. So a solid is a shape that has three dimensions, a length, a width, and a height, as opposed to just two dimensions, length and width. A polyhedron is a solid composed of polygonal faces, so faces that are polygons. A face is like the flat surface that are connected along lines, segments called edges, and they meet at a point which we call a vertex or multiple vertices. So this is an example of a polyhedron. Um, some typical types of polyhedrons are prisms. So a prism takes the name of whatever its base is. So for example, a triangular prism has a base of a triangle. A hexagonal prism has a base of a hexagon. Um, a circular prism, we call those cylinders. Rectangular prisms would have a base that's a rectangle. If all the sides are exactly the same, that would be your cube or your cuboid. Another one that's common is your pyramids. So again, pyramids take whatever the name of the base is. So a square base pyramid. Um, they all meet at one apex, and then you can find the height, which is from the apex down to the base here. Um, a tetrahedron, which is the same thing as a triangular-based pyramid, so on and so forth. A circular-based pyramid um, would be a cone, and then we also have our sphere and our half-sphere, which we call a hemisphere. So we have a cuboid, um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H which has dimensions 4, 5, and 6 centimeters, and we want to find the diagonal DF. So D and F are on diagonals from each other, and we want to find this diagonal. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find that diagonal DF. So first thing I did was I found the diagonal BD so that I could have this right triangle FBD. And I have a right triangle here, BDC. So I have a right angle, angle C here, and sides 4 centimeters and 5 centimeters. So I found the hypotenuse doing Pythagorean theorem, and I found that this diagonal BD would be the square root of 41. So then, if we look at triangle FBD, we're finding the diagonal DF, that's the hypotenuse, with your right angle here at angle B. So then one leg is the square root of 41, which is what you just found, and then one leg is 6, which is the height, and again, Pythagorean theorem, and you find that this diagonal is 8.77 centimeters. So now we want to find the angle or the size of angle BDF. So BDF, so this angle in here. So go ahead and pause the video and try that. So I'm looking at this triangle here, BDF. Um, so I drew it down here. So this height again, BF is 6. And the hypotenuse DF we just found to be the square root of 77. And we want to find angle D. So we know the opposite and the hypotenuse. So that's sine using Sokotoa. So sine of angle D is 6 over the square root of 77. And so in order to find the angle, you need to do inverse trig. So angle D is sine inverse of 6 divided by the square root of 77, or 43.1 degrees. So using this cuboid here, we had a bunch of right triangles, and we could use our Sokotoa, our right triangle trig, in order to find our missing pieces of information. So we have a rectangular pyramid, A, B, C, D, E, which is a pyramid that has a base of a rectangle with dimensions 8 centimeters and 5 centimeters. And the height of the pyramid is 10 centimeters. O is the center of the base where the height comes down, um, directly below what you call the apex E. And the first thing we want to do is we want to find the angle between uh, side BE and the base of the triangle. So go ahead and pause the video and try that. So I looked at this right triangle. If we want to find this angle B here, I looked at the triangle EBO. And so we know the height EO is 10. But that's the only piece of information that we know. And we want to find this angle B. So I wanted to find one of the other sides for this triangle in order to use Sokotoa. So I decided to find this base EOB. So I looked at the triangle that's half the base here, CBA. And I know that this side AB is 8, and this side AC is 5. And again, this is a right angle because it's a rectangular pyramid. So I did so uh, Pythagorean theorem, and I found that this side CB is the square root of 89. So then this center here has to be directly in the middle. So that means that this distance OB would be half of the square root of 89. So now I have the opposite and the adjacent. So I did tangent of angle B is side 10 divided by 1 half square root of 89. So since I'm solving for the angle, I need inverse trig. So B is equal to tangent inverse of, I just simplified 10 divided by 1 half to be 20 over the square root of 89, which is 64.7 degrees. So now go ahead and pause the video and try B, finding the angle between EB 
and EC. So this upper angle up here and find the angle EMO where M is the midpoint of side AC. So there's quite a few ways you can do this one. The way that I found to be the easiest, what I noticed is that this angle that we're looking for, I looked at the triangle CEB. So this angle CEB is twice the angle that would be in this triangle that we just found, angle OEB. So we found this angle down here B, so I found the angle OEB by doing 180 degrees minus 90 minus the 64.7 degrees that we just found. So this upper angle here would be 25.3-ish degrees. And then twice that would be the whole angle that we're looking for. So our whole angle, CEB, would be 50.5 degrees. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and pause the video and find angle M. So last part, part C, we want to find angle EMO, where M is the midpoint of side AC. So I drew our little triangle right here, EMO, and we know that the height EO is going to be 10 centimeters. And since this O is right in the middle, that means that MO is going to be 4 centimeters. It's going to be half the length of this whole side. And so then we have opposite and adjacent. And so we want this angle M. I set up tangent of M to be 10 over 4. So therefore, M is the tangent inverse of 10 over 4, or 68.2 degrees. So when you're doing one like this, you just want to look at the different triangles and see what pieces of information you know about all your different triangles. And it's especially nice when they're right triangles and you can apply Pythagorean theorem or SOHCAHTOA to all your different pieces. So here are all the volume and surface area formulas. Anything that has a red asterisk by it is something that is in your formula booklet. So I would pause the video and write down all these formulas. Babreca, or the kidney, is a lake in the Rila Mountains of Bulgaria with the shape of a kidney. The area of the surface of the lake is 85,000 square meters, and the average depth is 28 meters. So using this information, find the volume or estimate the volume of the water in the lake. So volume, this is a little funky shape, but basically it's the area of the base times whatever the height is, in which case the area of the base is the 85,000 square meters, and the height or the depth is 28 meters. So therefore, the volume of this lake would be 2,383,000 meters cubed. So for this next example, we have a cylinder which has a radius of 2 centimeters and a height of 7.5 centimeters. So go ahead and pause the video and find the volume. So the volume of a cylinder is the area of the base, which is the circle, times the height. So pi r squared times h, where r is 2 and your height is 7.5. So you end up with pi times 2 squared times 7.5, which is 94.2 cubic centimeters. So the next example, find the volume of a triangular prism whose base is an isosceles triangle with equal sides of 12 centimeters and included angle of 130 degrees. And the height of the prism is 15 centimeters. So go ahead and pause the video and try that. So the volume of a prism is the area of the base times the height. So in this case, the base would be this triangle. So we have to find the area of the triangle. You have a side angle side triangle. So if we go back to the previous section, it's going to be 1 half times the two sides times the sine of the included angle. So you end up with 1 half times 12 times 12 times the sine of 130 degrees. And so you get 55.1552 square centimeters. And that's the area of the base. And then if we want to find the volume, we just multiply that by the height of the prism, which is 15 centimeters. So you end up with the volume to be 827 cubic centimeters. Example number four says a cylindrical can holds three tennis balls. Each ball has a diameter of cent six centimeters, which is the same as the diameter of the, of the cylinder. And the cylinder is filled all the way to the top. We want to calculate the volume of space in the cylinder that's not taken up by the tennis balls. So go ahead and pause the video and try that. So the volume of the space would be the volume of the can itself, the cylinder, minus whatever the volume of the balls are. So I did the volume of the cylinder first, which would be the area of the base times the height, or pi r squared h, where if the diameter of the balls, which is also the diameter of the cylinder, is 6 centimeters, that means the radius is 3 centimeters. And then the height it would be all three balls stacked on top of each other, all at 6 centimeters wide. So that would be 18 centimeters. So you end up with pi times 3 squared times 18, or 162 pi. 
And then the volume of the balls, well, there's three of them, and each one is a sphere, and the volume of the sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, where r, again, is 3. And so you end up with the volume of all three balls to be 108 pi. So then the volume of the space would be 162 pi minus 108 pi, or 169.6 cubic centimeters. For the next example, we want to find the total surface area of the re rectangular base prism whose base has dimensions 10 meters and 8 meters, and whose slant heights are 12 meters and 13 meters respectively. So you can look at the picture and see all of that. So go ahead and pause the video and find the surface area of this pyramid. So surface area is the sum of all the sides. So we have five sides in which case two pairs of them are the same. So we have two triangles that are congruent, A, E, B, and D, E, B, uh, C. And then we have two other triangles that are congruent, B, E, C, and A, E, D. And then we have the rectangular base. So I found the area of all three of those pieces individually and then added them up. In this case, they give us a slant height, which is the height of this triangle. So if I look at this triangle AEB, I know the base and I know the height. So the area would just be 1 half base times height, or 60. Same thing with triangle BEC. I know the base is 8 and the height is 13. So the area of that triangle is 52. And then the rectangular base, just length times width, you end up with the area to be 80. So we want twice the area of triangle one, twice area of triangle two, and then the rectangle. So if you add all of that up, the surface area is 304 square meters. So this last one, it says a cone has a radius of five centimeters and a total surface area of 300 centimeters rounded to the nearest integer. And we want to find A, the slant height L of the cone, and B, the perpendicular height H of the cone. So go ahead and pause the video and try that. So the first thing I did is I used the surface area information to give us slant height. So the surface area of a cone, in the formula book, they just have the curved surface, which is this pi r times the slant height l. But this is saying the total surface area. So we want to add on the base or the area of the circle as well. So the surface area is going to be pi r squared plus pi r l. And we know that is going to be 300. And we know our radius is 5. So then I just used that and I solved for L. I subtracted 25 pi from both sides and then divided both sides by 5 pi and got the slant height to be 14.1 centimeters. From there, we have a right triangle where we know one side and the hypotenuse. So I just used the Pythagorean theorem and said 14.1 squared is equal to 5 squared plus h squared. Subtracted 5 squared from both sides, took the square root, and got that the vertical height was 13.2 centimeters. So this has been volume and surface area of three-dimensional shapes. Um, although a lot of those formulas are in your formula book, it is something that you should know pretty quickly and at least be able to recognize what types of shapes they are to be able to then find them in your formula booklet.